Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be about preparing for the UK CAT. I know that a lot of questions that I get asked about the application process to med school or the conversation, one of the first thing that comes up is or like um, the admission tests that you need to apply to university. Sorry guys, I live by the tube so there's a lot of noise. So there are three medical school admission tests uh, for people applying to med school in the UK. So the first one is the UK CAT, well not the first, the first one I'm going to talk about is the UK CAT, the second is the BMAT and the third if you're a graduate entry medical student like I was is the GAMSAT. So the only one that I actually had to take was the UK CAT so that's what I'm going to talk about because that's what I know most about and I had to prepare for that. So. The UK CAT basically is kind of almost similar to a psychometric kind of test that sometimes em employers give to people applying for jobs. The main parts that make up the UK CAT test are the quantitative reasoning section, the verbal reasoning section, the abstract reasoning, decision analysis and the situational judgment test area. So that so the UK CAT is basically made up of five five kind of sections and it takes 2 hours. Uh, to do it and it can be quite time pressured actually so you you know you have to practice for it one of the things so I actually took the UK CAT twice and one of the things that people told me was that oh you can't really revise for it it's fine just go in you know do you like one or two mock uh, kind of papers on their website and you'll be fine lies people don't believe the lies yes you you can't really revise for it because of the kind of test it is but you can practice because it's so time pressured i think one of the big kind of pitfalls for people is actually run it out of time so you can practice 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 under time conditions for it so i'm just going to go basically really briefly through how i went through um or went about you know preparing for the uk cat test so I'm going to split it up into kind of like before the UK CAT, on the day of the UK CAT and afterwards. So starting off before the UK CAT. So this is probably one of the most important bits of the whole process. You know, you have to practice for the tests. So what I did, there are lots of resources out there. Sometimes it can be quite overwhelming if you're trying to look for things to do or resources to use and like there's lots of information everywhere so choosing the right things to do can be you know just an unnecessary hassle so basically what I did and, and again this is for me it might work for someone else for someone else it might not work so don't take it as gospel so what I did was I used well when I did it it was a 600 UK cat question I believe or 300 even but now it's actually the 100 UK cat question book and that's the I can I think you can get it off Amazon Amazon I'll put the link below to the link for the book itself um, and I actually found that really helpful I found it actually the questions in it harder than in the real UK cat I don't know whether the questions I got were just lucky or I don't think that was the case but because it's harder it actually it don't get too scared about it because it can scare people I was like how am I meant to do this what do these people think I am but especially in the time conditions you know most of those questions you could figure it out if you had like the time you wanted but it's two hours we're talking about here for five sections you know you have to bang these questions out these questions out basically so I went through that and they actually have really good tips on how to approach and the different sections things to look out for especially with abstract reasoning little tips so that the the questions or don't just look like random shapes like there's a connection between everyone and it gives you tips on how to do that so I actually found that book really useful and uh, one thing that I I could probably advise you to do is kind of I guess this only applies if you've taken it before so you know the section you're weakest on so I know my weakest section was abstract reasoning so I knew to spend more time on that section for next time so and then the sections that kind of came more easily to me so for me that was verbal reasoning then I I still did questions I still did practice for it but then I didn't spend like too long on it because you know I wanted to focus on the other areas that actually needed more improvement another resource that I used was Medify which is this uh, website that has like 
more than 2,900 like questions in their question bank and they have like mock papers. When I used it, thankfully, I think they were just up and coming, so it wasn't that expensive. Um, but now I think it's still not too crazy. You know, it's still quite affordable. And from what I remember, it was worth it. So if it's something that, check it out yourself, look through the resources. They've also got good tips as well. And if it's something that you want to do, then then I'd, you know, I'd recommend signing up to it as well. Um, I should probably just say that this isn't sponsored. Like, this is just from my own kind of experience of things. And so, yeah, so the main resources I used were that the, well, 1000 Question UK Cat book for you guys now, um, Medify, but also the UK Cat resources on the actual UK Cat website. They have like mock papers, they have tips as well. So those give you the most realistic feel of what the exam is actually going to be like on the day. So those, in terms of resources, that's what I mainly use. I'm not someone that likes to use too many things because I don't want to be overwhelmed with too much information. So I just kind of focused on those three and kind of went with that. And, you know, it turned out all right in the end. I know a res another resource that people talk about, which I didn't use personally myself, was uh, the Kaplan kind of courses. So for me, I was like, that's way too expensive. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I ain't about that life. But some people are about that life. So, you know, if it's something that you think you would want to do, I've heard some people say it's really good. Some people are like, well, it wasn't worth it. But check it out, look into it. And if you feel like you would benefit from it, you know, if you want to make the most of your medical school application or this, or just in terms of this app, um, admission test, then go, go for it, go for it. Um, now going on to the preparation time for the UK cap everyone is different you know how you work so you have to kind of tailor this to it but for me personally i started about one month before the uk cat test so i would do about an hour a day when i started off then two weeks before the uk cat test i kind of upped that to like two hours a day and then the week before the uk cat and then i went into kind of full drive mode and so for everybody like it will be different but I do suggest starting in time, not too like, not like six months in advance. I think that's a bit crazy. Like you'll forget, you know, half of what you learned by then. So that it's fresh in your mind, start a one, like start like a month before and then, you know, increase the time you spend on it as you get closer to the test. Moving on to the day of the UK CAT test. I know everybody says this about every exam that you do but get some rest, you know, have some food, take care of yourself, rest, make sure you're well rested because if you're super tired, you know, adrenaline will only take you so far, like you need to, to be prepared in your body as well for it, just like you will for any other exam. Everyone is different in terms of whether they want to look at stuff on the day of the exam or not, you know. I, what did I do? Actually, I didn't look at a thing. I was like, no, I'm not going to look at anything. There's no point. But then on the bus there, I was like, okay, you know, I had a book in my bag. I probably shouldn't have taken that. And then I was like, I'll just, I'll just look through some stuff really quickly. It wouldn't hurt. But the thing, the problem with that is that it can get you overwhelmed if you find something that you don't know and can send you into panic mode, which you don't want just before you're about to take the exam. Because, you know, there's not much you can do at that point. However, I was helped because some random person started talking to me on the bus, even though they saw I was reading. But it's all good because they helped me not to focus on 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 the questions. And so I kind of went into it with a fresh mind. So I, thank you, random person on the bus. Um, <laughs> another thing, it will sound so random, but it's good to stay hydrated, you know, in terms of eating well and stuff. But don't drink too much water. If not, you will need to pee really badly in the exam. I don't know if you feel this is TMI, but by the time I got to SJT, I was just like, I need to finish this test because I need a pee. Like, you need to <laughs> take that into account. <laughs> but no, so make sure you go to the toilet beforehand. Drink in, you know, enough water, but not too much so you're not in the predicament I was in because that can really mess with your concentration. And then just kind of go into the test, do, you know, say a prayer or do like a motivational speech or do some meditation or breathe in and out, whatever you need to do to kind of get yourself in the zone. Everybody's different. 
do that before the test and then go in at this point you know there's not you know you just have to go and sit the test now and so go in do the test you know work on the you know keep an eye on time don't get too focused on it but do keep an eye on the time I'm not gonna lie for I didn't run out of time apart from one section which was the quantitative reasoning which I was I kind of knew was the case but don't leave any question blank like if you see that you're running out of time one minute till your time run runs out there's a timer well there was when I was when I was sitting it there's a timer on it so one minute to it to the end of the time if you've got certain questions left there's no point just go through and guess and hope for the best I don't know it's probably why people don't like the UK cat so because some people can do that and then get amazing marks well some people who kind of focus on everything then don't do as well but there's no point leaving any question blank you know you've got a one in four or one in five how many options you have of getting it right so it's you give yourself more of a chance if you just click anything than if you leave it blank there's no negative marking thankfully i wouldn't advise that if there was negative marking but there's none so that's your best bet so coming out of the examination you're all done with the uk cat you're like oh my weeks of hard work is culminating in this moment you wait for them to print your results out again try not to stress because again there's nothing you can do at this point so you get your results it's either one of two things that can happen you know you'll be like woo I did really well thankfully and then you can kind of get on with things or you can be like oh I didn't really you know this didn't go like I planned I would advise that whether you do as well as you hoped or you didn't do as well as you hoped treat yourself anyway you know you've just taken an exam get yourself an ice cream you know just just do something nice for yourself you know because you have put put the work in and whether you know the UK cat is the UK cat so whatever you get just kind of move forward from that if you do really well in the UK cat you kind of go yay you know my un I can apply to these, these universities with this mark so I don't need to worry about that if you don't do as well as you want if you don't do as well as you would have wanted to you can still move forward your medicine dream isn't over you can still kind of there are other admission tests you can do you might need to reevaluate your university choices depending on the you you know what they want in terms of the uk cat but it's not over okay just kind of reevaluate take take a step back maybe now you you know realize you have to do the bmat or the gamsat but kind of move on from there okay there's no point you know you can maybe have your moment you know a couple of hours or the rest of the day to be like oh i wish i could have done better but then have your moment then move on like be like okay now what can i do to kind of keep on going with this application process because it doesn't end just because you don't do well in the uk cat so one tip i could give that some people may find helpful is that to take the uk cat early i know some people are like oh take it a little bit later on gives you time to prepare but maybe it's different for me because i was a grad student so maybe this just applies to grads the uk cat as far as i'm concerned is it's i believe it's the cheapest one to take and also the one that is definitely less intense less less intense than the gamsat i knew that you know to be able to take the test find out what i had with the uk cat and then still have enough time to prepare for the gamsat if needed then I wanted to take the test early. So that's what I did. So no matter what the outcome, even if I hadn't as done well, I still would have had time to then go on to do the GAMSAT test. Thankfully, I didn't have to do that because that GAMSAT is <laughs> no joke. But, you know, if I had to, I would have. And I'd left my t myself enough time to be able to factor that in too. So... All in all, I hope that you found some of these tips useful. I'm not the, you know, font of all knowledge, but, you know, I'm able to share what kind of worked for me and how I went about things. So if you have any other questions, if you want me to, to discuss any other topics in particular, just email or comment below and I'll try, and best my, I'll try my best to do it. 
Um, even with the Bima and Gamsa, even though I didn't take it myself, I know quite a few people who did. So even if it's talking to those people, even getting them on here to kind of share their own experiences, then I'm happy to do that. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.